Hey everyone, welcome to the second video in my Rune Factory 4 crafting series. Uh, in this video, we'll be talking about equipment materials and how you can upgrade and use them. Uh, this video is quite funny to me because in real life, my actual job is to be a material physicist. Uh, that is completely irrelevant, but it is funny. Um, I know I said I was a teacher last video, I'm both, we have to do both, uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, so before I begin, a uh, quick caveat. So this video will contain slight spoilers um, <clears throat> with regards to item names, uh, locations, and bosses. Um, so for the first half of this video, we'll have spoilers um, of that nature until the um, time the credits play, uh, the second time the credits play. Um, so, but until that point, we'll mainly just be talking about locations and um, items. After that, I'll show the final dungeon, uh, which some people might consider spoilers. Uh, so if you are one of those people, then you might want to skip this one, and I will hopefully see you next time. Uh, but for now, uh, let's get to it uh, with a quick summary of um, what we did last time, uh, which was talk about how you can craft materials and upgrade them. Um, so a quick, uh, quick summary, basically, uh, we can make a weapon, uh, and we cra when we craft it, we can use up to three materials during the crafting. Um, so I'm going to put in, say, three bronzes, and the material effect will be put onto that weapon. So we will have four items that give us defense plus four. So our final material, our final weapon, will be claymore with defense plus four, which I will show you uh, now. There you go. Defense plus, sorry, four times three, 12. Defense plus 12. Uh, we can also upgrade, um, so I'm going to go to that claymore again, and I can upgrade with another bronze to give it four defense as well. And I can do this up to nine times until it hits level 10. So now the claymore has 12 plus four, or 16 defense. However, every time after this I upgrade the same item, um, so if I upgrade with another bronze, the defense will only go up by half each time. So from 16 to half of four, so two, so 18, I'll only get 18 defense. Um, for how you actually craft uh, stronger items with all of the items you want to use during your crafting, uh, check out last video. Uh, that is over there. Uh, but yeah, so basically this means that we can use up to 12 different items to upgrade or craft a material. So three when we're actually crafting and nine when we're upgrading. And because there are so many different items in this game, uh, it's important to think about which ones are really good. Uh, and which ones aren't, just so you have a good idea of what good equipment is. Uh, so yeah, let's get to this one. So, uh, first item I want to talk about is the Four Leaf Clover and the Great Four Leaf Clover, which basically do the same thing, and is very useful for the later items we'll be talking about. So what the Four Leaf Clover and the Great Four Leaf Clover do, uh, is they increase the item drops you get from defeating other monsters. So I have a few in my fridge right now, so I'll just go and get them. In my fridge, in game, not in my fridge, over there. Um, but yeah, okay, cool, so here they are. So we have some normal four leaf clovers and some great four leaf clovers. Um, they grow well in spring and fall, I believe. Um, once you have shipped some, you can buy them from Blossom, uh, although they're a bit expensive, about 4,000 gold each. Um, but yeah, uh, four leaf clovers are very good in game in general for farming and stuff. Um, and great four leaf clovers are a bit harder to make, um, but the actual item drop effect is equivalent between them both. So you can use either or. Um, there's no point in using both. You just need one somewhere in your equipment, and you'll have the full effect, which basically increases item drops by around 11%. Um, I haven't tested this. This is just data mined by a um, very good data miner in the community called OmniGamer, uh, who also helped with some later stuff in this video. So thanks to him. Uh, or her, I actually don't know. Um, but yeah, um, you can also give materials with four leaf clovers to your partners, to your allies, and they will also increase the drop rate as well by about 2% each. So that's really, really handy if you want to farm some stuff. And the main difference is that the great four leaf clovers are great and bigger. Um, they have higher difficulty and they have a higher rarity, which might be useful if you're trying to fully optimize your gear. Uh, just for farming though, it doesn't really matter. Um, and you can upgrade them to increase your rarity, uh, to increase your chances of getting rare items. Uh, so yeah, uh, I have for the clever on my sword. Uh, that's probably not a tool you can put in your armor instead. Uh, you do you. 
Okay, so once you have a four-leaf clover, another useful item you can get is the double spiel and the tenfold spiel. So what these items do is they multiply the effects of the last item used. Um, so this is very, very useful. Um, so for example, we talked about how if you use the same item multiple times, you get diminishing returns. Our second bronze only increase our defense by two. However, what double spiel and tenfold spiel do is that they, if we take that uh, claymore and we put in a double spiel, um, rather than increase the defense by two, it'll double the effect of the item. So four defense times two equals eight. So the upgrading for the double spiel will increase the defense by eight from 16 up to 24. Now for bronze, this isn't very useful, but later on when we talk about really strong materials, doubling the effects are very, very significant. Uh, in addition to double spiel, there's also another item called a tenfold spiel. Uh, which is stronger than double spiel. And from the name, you can probably guess that instead of doubling the effects of the item, tenfold spiel multiplies the effects by eight. It's a, it's a weird name. Uh, it multiplies it by eight, which isn't 10, but it's still like a lot. Okay, so to get uh, to double spiel and tenfold spiel, we sort of need specialized equipment actually. Uh, so they're pretty unique in the way. So if you do want to get them, I recommend you just make a quick new uh, weapon. I'm so just going to make a spear. And then you can um, upgrade it uh, with something. Um, but before that, we want an item called a Scrap Metal Plus. I'll go more in detail next time. We just, I'll just go through it quickly now. Um, you can get a Scrap Metal by, for, by failing a craft, or by failing a forge. So I just try to forge a sword with milk. And when you do that, you get an item called Scrap Metal. Um, or sometimes, if you keep doing it, eventually you might get an item called Scrap Metal Plus. So I'm just going to keep failing at crafting this piece of Scrap Metal. And eventually, I'll get the item called... Work with me here. Eventually. It'll work eventually. Trust me. Okay. Game. I'm gonna put in like nine four leaf clover instead. Surely one of them will be a scrap metal plus. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So we have a scrap metal plus. Um, and what scrap metal plus does is if you upgrade a weapon with scrap metal plus, that weapon will only do one damage. So I'm gonna get my severe upgrade with a scrap metal plus. <clears throat> and while I'm here, I'm also going to increase its range with an item called the glitter log guide just to make things easier for us. Um, I'll go more details about weapon materials in the next video. So for now, just bear with me. Um, <clears throat> and I'm also going to upgrade it with a wind crystal. Uh, this is less important, but again, we'll talk about it next time. So if you're interested in the video, uh, keep watching. Okay, so we have our spear and what the scrap metal plus it does is it lets us do one damage whenever we attack. Um, and you want to take your spear and you want to go to Leon Karnak. Um, go right, up, and right. <clears throat> and you'll find a bunch of these uh, rats. You're gonna try and hit them. Um, if they don't drop any items on the first hit, just leave and go back in. Hit them, leave and go back in. And eventually, um, we might find an enemy called a Mineral Squeak. Uh, they're red, so the yellow ones we don't care about. Uh, go in, hit them go out. I'm using this uh, rune ability called Reaper Slash, which just has a long range, so I don't need to go too close in the room to use it. Um, and eventually... Ah, oh, there we go. So at this point, drop an enemy. I'm going to hit him a few more times. He's going to drop four items. And the items he dropped are these double spears. And these are the items that double the effect of the last item. Every now and then, instead of dropping a double steel, it'll drop a tenfold steel, which is a really good one. Now you can only use one double steel and one tenfold steel in the same equipment. So you can use both. You can only just use one of each. Uh, you can't use two tenfold steels, unfortunately. But yeah, so a lot of the time you do want to use double and tenfold steels um, to increase the effects of items. Um, and it's not just numerical. So like um, you saw briefly, I use a double steel to increase the effects of the glitter ore guide to increase my weapon's range. And that's very, very good. Um, but yeah, so those are double steals. Uh, next item we're going to talk about is also pretty weird, and that is called Object X. 
So, um, Object X is made in a similar way to how I made the scrap metals, except instead of failing at um, forging, you fail at making chemistry. So I'm going to um, try and make medicine out of, and this is my scrap metals. I'm gonna try and make medicine out of uh, scrap metal. Uh, I'm gonna make a whole bunch of them. And when you fail these, uh, you're guaranteed to have these items called Object X. Uh, the level of Object X depends on the level of the item you used. So since these are made out of the scrap metal made from the four leaf clovers, they're level 10. So it's, you can guarantee high levels. Um, okay, but so what Object X does is they reverse the effect of all upgrades you use after it. Um, so instead of increasing our defense by five, it'll decrease it by five, for example. Um, and yes, um, this is really, really good because some later items we're gonna talk about decrease your stats by a lot. Uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. <clears throat> and uh, you can cancel the effects of Object X by using it again. Or you can also cancel it with a tenfold speed. So let me just quickly show you that. Um, if I upgrade my Claymore that I've been talking about this whole time with an Object X, and I use this, for example, this item which should increase my magic defense by 77, it'll decrease it by 77. Uh, instead, magic defense minus 77. Um, if I use a double steal, uh, I'm gonna double the effect of the last item. So it'll be 77 times two or 154. Um, so we'll go back to plus 77, we're good. And then every item I use after that will have the normal effect. So the first object X is completely canceled out. Um, so if I use a, this item instead, instead of, I will slick at the plus 77, so I will go up to 154. So yeah, you can cancel effects of an object X with another object X, a tenfold steal, or a double steal. Um, and yes, okay. So the main reason why we care so much about this item called the object X is because of the next item uh, called the Mealy Apple. Uh, the Mealy Apple has a huge negative, uh, gives huge negatives, so it decreases your strength and intelligence by 100, and your vitality by 150, and it increases your resistance by 10%. But with an object X, it increases it. And to do that, you basically, uh, this one's a bit weird as well. So you need to, it only appears during a typhoon. So you wanna make sure there's a typhoon there. Um, I'm gonna summon a typhoon quickly. Um, this session might take a bit. Summon typhoon. Oh, okay, it'll be here tomorrow. So I'm gonna quickly go to sleep. Um, and when there's a typhoon, um, you want to go to Sir Cerezo Hill, um, which I'm just going to fly to quickly. I just put my actual weapon now. Uh, call the airship, go to Sir Cerezo Hill, and you want to go down, one, and then, yep, yeah, right, and then you can see this enemy called the Typhoon, so you want to kill it, um, and then what you want to do to be efficient is that when it dies, but before uh, the gate back disappears, you want to use the escape. That way you can still get the drop from him if it appears, but he won't um, stop spawning. Because if you kill him completely, he'll disappear. So if you kill him, you make him start disappearing, and then you escape out. And every now and then he might drop this item called the Mealy Apple. Um, it's not that uncommon, luckily, uh, but it is still a bit rare. And yeah, the Billy Apple gives you huge stats, and ah, oh, I did drop this time. So I'm just gonna kill him fully this time. Um, pick up the Millie Apple, and yeah, so the Millie Apple, um, if you upgrade with it, it gives you all these huge stats and 10% resistances. Well, makes you lose 10% resistances. But again, if you upgrade your um, item that had an object X in it, it goes to positive. So I can upgrade my mail with that mealy apple, or with a mealy apple, and it suddenly gets to this 10% resistances. Um, it says 11%, this is just a floating point error within the game. It, it's 10%. Um, but yeah, um, and this is of course very, very strong. Um, so the first problem you might find though is that um, it's so strong that you might want to use it multiple times, but if you use it multiple times, 
um, you get the diminishing effects. Instead of 10%, you only get 5%. Uh, but luckily, um, like I said before, when you craft with an item, you don't have those diminished effects at first. Um, so what we can do is we can try and craft an item. Um, first we need to get object X, so I'm going to fail at crafting more milk. Um, fail at crafting milk. Let's make a few of them. Okay. I'm going to fail at crafting milk. And um, if I make a vest with object X, and a bunch of mealy apples. Um, there's a chance that I'll get the full 20% benefit. Um, so there's the vest right now, and woo, it worked. So I get 20% to all stats, and um, the object X effect stays. So I can upgrade the vest um, with more mealy apple, with at least one more free mealy apple to go up to 30%. Of course, after this, the effects are still half, so the next one will only be 5%. Uh, but yeah, so 30% resistance on any piece of armor is very, very strong. Especially because the resistances add up. So if you have, say, 4 pieces of armor, each with 30%, your overall resistance goes to 30 times 4, so 120%. And once you go above 100%, you start absorbing damage. So you'll absorb elemental damage instead of, healing, instead of taking it. And you might have seen that when I did fight the monster, when he used his wind attack or his dark attack, I just stood in it and it healed. That's because my main armor has all these melee apples in it. Now, if you do this, sometimes you might notice it failed. So I did this earlier. So I made a shirt with an object X and two melee apples. And the resistances went down. And this one, I did the same, I did the exact same thing, and this one has nothing. I did the exact same thing here, and this one did, gave me plus 20%. Um, the reason for this is a bit finicky, so to do that, I'm going to grab my teaching assistant, Barrett, who is... Where are you right now, Barrett? Ah, you're in the castle. Uh, hi, Barrett. Morning. Okay, so cool. I'm going to say, please check my... Okay. I'm going to get him to follow me outside, actually. Morning. Okay, so if I equip um, the shirt with a plus 20%, he's going to say... Morning. I've got something to check my gear. The shirt has been has had object X, Millie Apple, and Millie Apple in making it. Um, so the object X is there, reverse the Millie Apple effects to give me plus ten percent, plus ten percent. On the other hand, um, you might be able to guess what's happening next. On the one that has a negative effects, if I equip it and I ask him what's wrong with the shirt, he will say that it looks like Millie Apple, Millie Apple and then object X where he's been making this. Okay, um, so the order still matters um, for how it's using crafting and this is mainly luck. So the melee apple by default decreases my stats. So I go minus 10%, then minus 10%, and then I flip everything after, which is pointless. Um, whereas we got before, the object X and then the melee apple flipped, is flipped by the first object X. Um, of course, the third case, um, if the object X is in the middle, you might be able to guess is this one, where it looks like nothing else happened. So in this one, where I have no special effects, I also going to check my gear, and he says the uh, melee apple, then object X, then melee apple. So the first melee apple decreased my stats, the second object X reversed everything after it, and the third item, the melee apple, increased my stats back up to zero. So the order makes the order is very important here. If you're using object X and melee apple in crafting, um, which you often do want to do, um, there's no real way to choose this. It's mainly just luck. So if you are crafting with object X and melee apple, you want to save, try and craft with it, and if it works, it works. If it fails, just reset and try again. Um, but yeah, uh, the melee apples are very very strong, and you can use up to three of them uh, before you start losing effects. But after that, uh, if you want to use any other item, you want to use the object X again to cancel it out, or else everything else will still be halved. Will still be reversed, sorry. Um, I guess quick note is that you can use uh, tenfold steel and double steel after the object X, so they use their full effect. 
Um, it's not very useful, but you can do it. So it'll be the first one will have a minus effect. So you might have a you might reverse the effects of say a silver and go to minus seven defense. But if you use your ten fold skill, you'll get plus seven times eight, so fifty six. So it'll be seven times instead of nine times for the two slots. So it's not too useful, but uh, you can if you wish. Okay, so that's Mealy Apple, and it's really good because it gives you elemental resistances and other stats as well. The next item we're going to talk about is the uh, left rock shard and other items that give you status resistance. So I'm going to let uh, Barrett go now. We don't need him for anything else today. Um, let's put up here. Okay, cool. So to get a left rock shard, you want to go to uh, Leon Karnak. And you're going to climb Leon Karnak. I'm just going to warp there using this warp point. And up here, you're going to find two doggos, um, Sano and Uno. So Sano is the one on the left, who's red, and Uno is on the right, who's blue. Um, you're going to test Mary Metal. You're going to beat them both. Uh, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to try and warp out uh, until the item drops. Uh, oh, they both dropped this time. That's nice. Okay, so we're going to warp up there again. Um, uh, let's fight them again quickly. Uh, in this one middle. Whoosh. Sorry. Sorry, doggos. Oh, I took damage because I'm wearing the wrong shirt. Uh, let me use my actual armor. Okay. Cool. So, this item is the left rock shard, and it gives you 6% resistances to most statuses, and 1% um, resistance to faint, and 1% to, to drain. Uh, this is really, really good um, because um, while statuses are bad, you don't want to get paralyzed or poisoned or go to sleep. And if you tenfold this, you go 6 times 8 plus 1, so 6 times 9. So you get 54% of most uh, statuses. Now, uh, we also have stats and skills here, and you have a uh, resist skill. And how these work is that um, once they're at max level, you actually end up getting natural, well, you did get the natural resistances depending on their level. Um, and once you get high enough, you automatically get, it adds up to 49% resistance, which means you only need 51% resistance to be fully immune to a status. Uh, a ten-folded left rock shard gives you 54% to basically everything, and 54 plus 49 is greater than 100%. So you're immune to poison, paralyze, seal, sleep, fatigue, and sick just with those two item slots, and that's really, really good. Along with some decent faint and drain resistance. Um, so that's why left rock shard is really, really good. Um, while I'm here, right rock shard is also really, really good. Um, I'll talk about, about that a bit later, uh, but I'm still talking about statuses. Um, faint and drain. Uh, so drain isn't too useful. Drain is just how much an enemy heals if they attack you when they would heal. Not many enemies have drain, and the amount they'll drain isn't going to be that much anyway, so it's pretty safe to ignore. Uh, faint can be very, very bad, um, because if you get hit by faint, you're going to die. So to get faint res up, you want to get the big bird's comb, which you can get from the clock clock nest. So we're going to just fly there as well. Um, clock clock nest. So where's the bottom? Yep. Cool. We could, we could just walk there. So I think there's a secret room over here. No, sorry. That's not the secret room. Okay. Well, there's a secret room, but that's not what we want. Uh, so these are mama doodles, and they have a chance of dropping big bird's comb. Uh, these are a fairly rare drop. Um, I'm just going to get back and forth for a bit until I hopefully find one. Um, none. None. Oh, that was fast. Okay. So the big bird's turn gives me 50% faint res in some attack. And again, because you get 49% resistance by default, uh, you get 50%, so it adds up to 99%. The last 1% you can get from the, the left rock shard. So a big bird's comb with a ten-folded left rock shard gives you full immunity to basically every status, except for drain, but drain doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so that's how you be immune to status. Um, cool. Next thing, next important resistance is reactions. So basically, a quick summary, there are sort of three things that I call reactions. 
and those are the three things we can get from those that front rock shard I said. So this thing gives me dizzy resistance, crit resistance, and knock resistance. And knowing what those things are are a bit complicated and a bit weird. So basically, dizzy resistance is how many takes, how many hits it takes you to get dizzy um, or stunned. So basically, if you get hit a lot, you'll eventually get stunned. Um, is there a way I can do that quickly? I'm not sure. Let me first take off my armor. So, do I have dizzy resistance? In my armor. Yeah, I do a bit. I want some armor because I don't want to die. Um, cool. Okay, this should probably be fine. Okay, so if I go here, all these birds hit me. No, they aren't. Okay, it'll be too complicated. But basically, eventually you'll get dizzy, which is basically a stun. Um, and so how good it is depends on your survivability. Like if you, um, if you are very uh, squishy, you're gonna die before you become dizzy, um, which is bad. Um, but it means that dizzy resistance isn't useful. Of course, if you're very, very bulky, uh, it's not gonna do anything anyway, but it's still nice to have. Um, basically, the better survivability, the more important dizzy resistance is. Uh, the next one is crit, uh, which is your chance of your enemy critting, and crits just ignore defense. Um, so the higher defense, the more important crit resistance is. Um, of course, if you have no defense, crit resistance is completely pointless because an enemy crit doesn't do anything. Um, even then, crits aren't the most important because uh, they're very rare. Um, you're, you're probably not going to die from a crit, you're probably going to die from something else. But yeah. And the last reaction is knock, which is how far an enemy knocks you back. It's not very important. Um, the knockback is usually going to be minor anyway. Uh, so yeah, um, Dizzy and Crit are fairly important, this knock isn't very much. But yeah, so there's the item we got, the right rock shard from before, um, the same place we got the left rock shard, and that gives Dizzy resistance, Crit resistance, and knock resistance. And that's very, uh, quite nice, um, especially the Dizzy and the Crit resistance. But there are a few other items that also give us nice reactions. Um, before I get there, yeah, so this is where the spoilers are going to start. Uh, we're going to start going into the post-game areas. Uh, and if you're worried about that, uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you later in the next one. But for now, we'll keep on going. I'm going to give a few seconds for those to leave, and I'm going to... So welcome everyone who is still here. Uh, we're still talking about reactions. So we have the Rat Rock Shard, which gives us all three. But the next beautiful one we want to talk about is the Chest Hair. And you get this one in Rune Prana, which you get at the end of the game. Um, so let's just quickly go and teleport to uh, Rune Prana. Actually, I'm going to go to sleep uh, in game, so it stops that burning. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go to Rune Prana, and this item gives us Dizzy Resistance 25%. Uh, so like I said, this resistance is probably the most important one, um, so this is pretty nice, and 25% is a pretty big number. So to go to Rimpon, I'm going to go to the Karnak. Let me put on my clothes again. Shoes. Heart pendant. That's it, that's it. Yeah, cool. And a weapon. The one I play. Okay. Cool. So go to Rimpon 7. And I believe it is... The third room. Um, here. Yep, cool. And we can fight two Grim Demons at once. Uh, kill them both quickly. And uh, hopefully one of them will drop a chest here. Oh, yep, cool. They dropped it. I warped out just to be safe. Uh, but yeah, and that gives us Fizzy Resistance plus 25%. So it's the third room for the Great Tur Demon. And yeah, these are pretty useful for survivability. Um, and this is what they look like. Dizzy resistance plus 25%, along with a whole bunch of other stats. Uh, the other useful one is the Ancient Art Cloth. Um, you get these in Rune Prana 7 as well. So you want to go back to the first room of Rune Prana 7. Um, so note that all of these items you can get from the Sharan's Maze as well. Um, some from actual bosses, some from mini bosses. So the Greater Demon is a main boss, um, but 
which happens on even level floors, and for mini bosses like this one, you get them in odd level floors. And yeah, so this is the. Oops, just knocked me out. Ah, oh, I keep missing. Okay. And this guy will drop an ancient on cloth eventually. And this gives busy and crit resistance, uh, which are both very nice, but it has a lower dizzy than the crater demon. It's uh, chest hair. Chest for it. Ah, there we go. Cool. Ah, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Uh, this guy can instant faint you, so if you don't have faint res yet, be careful. I just talked to the other room. Okay. Cool. Ah, well. Nice. I just died. Um, thanks, thanks, Nancy. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, so you get dizzy and crit resistance, which is very, very good. Um, so, um, just to quickly summarize, so you have the Rot Rock Shard, the Chest Hair, and the Ancient Ore Cloth, which each give um, different amounts, and you sort of want to uh, pick and match them depending on which ones you prioritize and how many slots you have. Um, I use some combination of all three in my equipment, um, but yeah. Except for crit, I don't care about crit. Uh, for a reason I can talk about in the next video, uh, which is the same reason I probably died, because I don't care about defense in my build. Uh, but yeah, okay, cool. And the next item we're going to talk about is the non-elemental resistance, which we get from the colored cores. So you get that in Rune Prana as well, so I'm going to go straight there again. Um, and you will get them from large fairies, which again you can also find in the Shiron's Maze. So um, you get them in the second to last room. Um, it's going to walk all the way to the end. And so there are three fairies over here. And yeah, they each have a chance of dropping a core of their own color. Uh, what's funny about these uh, girls is that they are all susceptible to faint even though they're bosses, so the fastest way is just to um, upgrade a weapon with high paint, uh, which I can talk to about next uh, episode. But yeah, so the yellow one drops the yellow, the blue one drops the blue, the red one drops the red, and the green one drops the green, uh, which is very surprising. Um, and yeah, so you want to go a few times until you get them all. Uh, this is also good for grinding uh, PP as well, oddly enough, because they count as bosses and bosses give higher PP rewards. But yeah, so what's cool about the red, green, and yellow cores is if you have a, um, a piece of equipment, so a piece of armor only, so not weapons. Um, actually, do they work with weapons? I'm actually not sure. I don't think I've ever tested it. I can quickly test that now, actually. Um, but if you take a piece of equipment, let's make a brand new one. Um, so we don't get confused. Let's make a protector. So if you upgrade a protector or any piece of armor or shoes or whatever with one elemental of resistance, um, you get... Um, so each one gives you 77 mesh defense, which is arguably quite nice. But if you use the last one, um, all of them, you get this effect called uh, no res. So it's normal as here. But once I use the fourth one, I get the stat called No Res, which is the resistance to non-elemental damage, which is everything that isn't an element. Now, I remember from before, we're resistant to basically every element. Um, so non-elemental resistance basically decreases all of our damage, um, all the damage that we would take anyways. So having all of our equipment with uh, these colored cores with No Res will half all damage we take which is very, very good for survivability. Um, I don't think it works with weapons. We can quickly check that out now. Ah, that's science. Uh, someone on Reddit asked if uh, there was enough physics. This is physics, this is science, this is testing. Um, but yeah, so this is very, very good uh, to give us more defense because um, it will basically mean we're immune to most things. Um, so there is one element that we aren't actually risen to, and that is a love damage type. Uh, there are ways you can get love resistance, but you can't get it from upgrading. You need it from specific uh, base weapons, uh, base armor. Luckily, only one el one enemy does do love resistance. No, does do love damage, 
and that is the pink dragon. And pink dragons are very, very uncommon, so there's not really much point in building for love resistance, unless you just really want to feel like you are resistant to love and absorb love. Anyways, uh, it doesn't look like that all four crystals do give you no resistance on your weapons, so it's only for armor and equipment and stuff you get from the crafting table, which makes sense. Um, so yeah, uh, there is also there has also been a rumor in the past that the order that you upgrade with the cores matters. Uh, it does not. I tested this earlier. So as long as you have any four, uh, no matter what order you put them in, you will get the you know res at the end. So yeah, it doesn't matter what order, as long as they're all there. Okay, so number eight that's important is the Tablet of Truth, um, which you get also in Rune Prana. Uh, I feel like there's a trend here. So we're going to go back to Rune Prana. Um, and what the Tablet of Truth does is it gives us 10% critical, uh, which is very nice because, as we said before, uh, critical ignores defenses. Uh, so depending on your build, you might really want critical. Um, and 10% is quite a lot. If you tenfold steal it, you'll go up to 90%. So you're basically all the way there, and your weapon might just have another 10% on it natively. So, yeah, okay, he dropped again this time. I'm getting very lucky with drops today. Um, yeah, so let me do go back there and get it. Um, I also hate this boss, this is like, in, in the uh, no upgrading walk playthrough I did, this is the worst boss. Uh, but yeah, so this one gives you 10% crit, which is very, very nice. Um, and you can put that on your armor to increase your critical of your weapon, somehow, some way. Um, but yeah, not complaining. Okay, and last item you can get that is very useful are the stat boosting items, uh, mainly the native dragon parts. So you get one from uh, Terrible, which gives you defenses, uh, vitality. You get one from Fearsome, which gives you strength, so physical attack. And you get one from Aquaticus, which will give you intelligence, um, which will increase your magic damage. And you get them in order, Garden of Light, Swimming Prominence and Deepwater Shrine, for vitality, strength, and intelligence. And you use whichever one you want. Uh, so this is probably the best item to tenfold steal if you have nothing else um, to do. And uh, this is really, really good because if you, for example, use a fire room scale and tenfold it, with those two slots you get 2,700 more strength, 300 times the nine. And what this means is every normal attack you do does 2,700 more damage. And that's often how I do so much of my damage. I'm just doing 2,700 for each piece of armor I have multiplied by whatever multiplier the attack I use has. So Reaper Slash has a multiplier as well. So the 2700 gets even higher, which is really, really good. And that's where all of your damage comes from. So once you fill out your resistances, you may as well use fat boosts and items, tenfold them, and you do a lot, a lot of damage. And yeah, so those are the main materials we use, but there are a few things I do want to briefly talk about after this. Um, so one is a quick tangent about shields. Um, so this is relevant because uh, shields are a piece of armor and you have effects on those shields. Um, but depending on what weapon you use, the shields have different effects. So there are a bunch of different types of weapons in this game. Um, I'll go over. Did you come over day? Um, so there are a few different types of weapons in this game, but with regards to shields, um, there are sort of three different types. So short swords and all farming tools give you the full effect of your shield. So everything the shield says it does, it will do. For short sword and all farming tools. Um, so for every, for most other things, so long swords, spears, axes or hammers, and stars, you get partial shield effects. And what this means is that all of your resistances are counted in full. And that's very important, so that's a really cool thing. So if you have 30% earth resistance and you use a long sword, you still get 30% earth resistance uh, from your shield. However, your stat bonuses are off. So if you if it says you will get a thousand strength and you have a long sword, you'll only get 500 strength. I'll go more in detail next episode. 
Um, but basically this means that you usually don't want to put your stats on your shield, you want to give your shield resistances. Um, and finally, the last two weapons, dual blades and gloves, completely ignore your shield. Uh, this includes resistances, so it's like you aren't wearing a shield at all. However, you can fix this, and you can fix this by upgrading a shield with a scale. Uh, I believe fish scales work as well, but dragon scales definitely work. So dragon scales including the um, fire run scale, for example, that we just talked about, the one that gives high strength. Um, this will make dual blades and gloves have partial shield effects, so you will get full resistances and half stats if your shield is upgraded with a fire run scale. Uh, I'll show you that briefly, I guess, actually. Um, so... Here is my, here are some gloves I'll make. I'll make leather gloves. Um, and I'll make a shield. Um, I'll make an iron shield. Um, actually, I'll make one of every, I'll make one of the long sword as well, and one of the short sword. Okay, cool. So if I unequip all of my items, let's put them in order. Okay, now my inventory is a mess. Okay, so there's an iron shield, which gives me defense plus eight. So I'm on 872. If I want to use a short sword, my defense is unchanged. So I still have my full shield effects. If I want to use my claymore, my defense drops down to by four. Um, so I only get plus four defense on my shield. So if I unequip my shield, I and I want to re-equip it, I get four defense from my eight. And finally, if I use my leather gloves and I try to use my shield, nothing happens. It gets completely ignored. However, if I upgrade my shield um, with a scale, let's get a fire on scale. Um, wherever it is, there we are. And I should put my shield in. Cool. Why is it the material? Oh, because I'm in the forge, not my crafting table. Okay, fire on scale, shield. I will get half effect from my gloves. So my defense will only go up by four instead of zero at least, and my strength will go up by 150 instead of 300. Um, so yeah, that's really, really good. Uh, I guess a quick note is that to get a lot of the stuff from Sharon's Maze, you can use a rosary if you don't know that. So if you have a, if you craft an item called a rosary, which I'm not sure I can right now, it might be a bit rare. Um, where is the rosary? There we are. Cool. Um, yeah, you need copy strings, which are hard to find. Um, I might do that next, in a, two videos from now. But if you equip your rosary, um, and you go to the Sharon's Maze, you will skip the entire dungeon and go straight to bosses. And that's the fastest way to get um, the high level items. So I go straight to the mini boss floor. But going through the whole maze just to get one item will take too long. Uh, as in it from that. But yeah. Cool. Um, so before we uh, leave, I'm just going to talk about some other options as well. So some options that aren't as good as the ones I just talked about, but are still decent and you might use for other uses. So if you already use a Fire Room Scale or a Water Dragon Fin for their offensive stats, a second one will have half effect, so only 150. What's better than using a second one is using one of these, a Chimera Tail or a Moving Branch. Uh, they both give 200 to your attack stats and minus 10 to the other, but that's not important. Um, so I'm going to put my clothes on again. Um, my shield, and my sword. Okay, cool. So you find both of these in Rune Prana. Um, I'm not going to bother actually getting the item. I'll just show you where they are. So we're going to go back to Rune Prana. Um, and so if you get the um, moving branch in this room, so second room to the right, um, from the uh, from the dead tree two. Uh, you can get it from the dead tree one, 
Uh, you cannot get it from the dead tree one. I want to repeat. So you have to get it from here in Ruprana. Uh, same deal with the Chimera Tail from the Chimera 2. So you fight a Chimera in the Water Dragon Ruins, that does not drop the Chimera Tail. You have to fight the one in Ruprana. Uh, but yeah. The other important item is the Holy Spore. Um, so the Holy Spore gives us Drain Resistance. So I've repeated already that Drain Resistance is not important at all. But if you do want it, uh, your option for that is to get it from um, the Giant Mushrooms, uh, which only appear on Fridays. So I'm going to go to sleep a few times until it becomes a Friday. So it's Tuesday right now. I'll keep doing that. Uh, but yeah. And so this will give you during response plus 50%. Uh, again, this is basically pointless, it's just more for bragging rights, just so you can like laugh at monsters who are trying to drain you. Um, so eventually when it becomes Friday, um, now I have a terrible song stuck in my head. Uh, okay, one more day. Cool. And now it's Friday. Um, you want to go to the uh, mushroom room. Mushroom room. Um, okay, so this one's a bit tricky. Uh, this is also annoying to get because you get it from this giant mushroom, and it's a rare drop. And if you, even if you warp out, oh, okay, I walked out this time. Uh, so I got a holy spore. There we go. Fifty percent drain rise, along with some other stuff. Um, so the attack stats don't work if you put them on your armor. So you only get the Drain Res and the 10 Magic Attack. Um, so the problem here is that it only appears once, and unlike, say, with the other bosses, if you warp out, it still won't respawn. So you have to save and try again each time uh, if you fail. Uh, there's a nearby save point in the Clockwops Nest, which is just over here. So you would save here, and then keep resetting until you get your Holy Spore. Uh, another option is the broken box um, for status res. So you get these from the uh, white and blue boxes, um, and they give you a whole bunch of status responses. Um, I don't do I have any in my inventory. Did I remember to bring some out? No. Um, so these are hard to spawn. You probably just have some by sheer coincidence from other fights. Um, and they give you huge responses to a bunch of things. So I only have one here. You can buy more from um, Raven. So this gives 10% to Poison, Seal, Paralyze, and Sleep, and 5% to Fatigue and Sick. So if you remember, the left Rock Shard gave 6% to all of these things, um, and 6% is lower than 10%. However, like I said, if you tenfold steal the left Rock Shard, you're already going to be immune. Um, also, Fatigue Res and Sick Res are lower here, and if you tenfold the Broken Box, you won't hit the... 51% threshold for fatigue and sick resistance. So these aren't quite good enough to go all the way. And also you don't get the faint resistance, the 1% faint resistance you get from left rock shard, which is enough to get you your threshold with the bird, big bird's gem. Basically, even though these numbers are higher here for the most part, it's going to be worse than the left rock shard. And also it is less than this. Yeah, um, that's not going to be important in the long run. So yeah, Broken Box is an option, especially early game, but it's going to be worse than the left rock shot. Okay, uh, next is the Broken Ice Wall. Um, so this, these are four reactions. Um, so this lets you increase your stun. So it helps um, stun enemies for a bit. And you get them in Ruined Prana as well. Um, Black Leon Karnak. So you, uh, for this one, you want to go to Rune Prana 7, and then you want to go backwards to Rune Prana 6. It's the fastest way. And this is the Death Ball. Uh, also a very annoying boss. Um, a bit long room for them, really. Okay, cool. And he might drop the Broken Ice Wall, which gives you stun plus 25%. Which is nice if you're building a set all around stun. Uh, but yeah. Uh, the next one is the final boss drop. Um, Probably too much spoilers, you know the item if you know it. Uh, it increases your knock, so it'll knock enemies away further, uh, which is, again, not too useful, but it's nice for a fun build if you want to try it. Uh, you can get that at the very end of Rune Prana. Um, other options for resistances, so instead of melee apples, you can use giant crystal flowers. 
Um, I think I have one Grow in my garden. I'm not sure if it's still alive. It might have died in the typhoon. Um, oh, it's still there. Cool. Everything else died there. Okay. So there are four giant crystal flowers, and each one grants you 20% resistance to an item. Uh, and you can tenfold these, unlike melee apples. So you can give you super high resistances to like one element if you really want to do that. Um, and yeah, so one for each different element. Um, and you get them from your farm, of course. Uh, and this one's a fun option. Um, so you get 30%, this is a typo here, oops. So you get 30% fire resistance um, from oil if you object exit. Um, so this is impractical, which is very funny. So you can buy oils from Blossom. Um, and you can also get oils from Leon Karnak uh, if you want it to be slightly higher level. Everything you buy, uh, if you buy oils from Blossom, they're going to be level one. If you want higher levels, you can just um, beat some of these uh, captains briefly, like these guys. They have a small chance of dropping oil. And oil gives you minus fire res. So if you nearly, if you object exit, you get plus 30% fire res, which is the highest you get from a single item. <laughs> Um, which is just funny to me. And similarly, uh, disastrous dishes, uh, which is a critical fail if you're cooking. Uh, so if you just fail at cooking a lot, uh, eventually you can make a disastrous dish, and upgrading a disastrous dish gives you minus 25%, which you can object X. Um, but yeah, so those are basically all of the um, items you might consider when you're upgrading. So just a quick summary of my thoughts. Um, elemental resistances um, are the best because they help you just absorb damage and ignore damage and keep attacking. Um, so for that, melee apples are the best because they give 11%, 10% to everything and you can stack them three times um, using the crafting trick. After that, it's a good idea to max out status resistances because you don't really want to get poisoned or paralyzed. Um, no resistance is also nice from cores and after that, you can fill out the rest with the reacting resistances, like your chest hair, um, or increase your stats, like with a fire rune scale. Um, an example of a piece of equipment um, that I might use, for example, would be this. So I would start off with the object X and two melee apples um, in the crafting. I would use might use one melee apple after that, um, which will have the full effect, and then reverse everything up before that to give me 30%. Um, well, I guess I'll quickly do that now with the example I had. So one of the shirts, uh, so the vest I made earlier has 30% resistance um, because I put in the three melee apples. After that, I can upgrade it with an object X. Um, uh, that's the 14 table again. Crafting table. Upgrade the vest with the object x and then with the big bird's comb to give me faint res uh, because you don't want to faint and then i might use the fireworm um, scale for some high damage numbers um, are they? there they are cool then I might use a tenfold skill to make that attack even. So right now it's three hundred attack. Right now it gets plus three hundred attack um, from the fireworm, um, plus all the other ones from the melee apples. And this will give me another two thousand four hundred from the tenfold skill. So from six hundred to three thousand. And then I'm going to use um, one of each of the cores. Again, the order doesn't matter, but I'm just going to go green, red, yellow, blue, and that would be a complete set of armor, uh, little, uh, one piece of armor. So we have this vest, and this vest has 30% elemental resistance, no resistance, faint res, 3000 strength, and uh, quite a bit of vitality and intelligence. Uh, if I were to do this properly, I would make sure it looked cool, um, like my Elvish cloak over here. 
and I would make sure it's uh, made with the stats of a better weapon, of a better armor. So I might, you know, use like the best armor in the game, and then turn that into something else that would look cool. Um, for example, the four dragon vest, uh, which is the best armor, um, gives like another five percent resistance, which is is smaller than from one milli apple, which goes to show how short the milli apple is, uh, but is enough to push it like just that little bit higher. Um, but yeah, um, and that is how you can upgrade your armor. You know, and I hope you learned a lot from that. Uh, yeah, and that's basically the second video in the series. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the next one will be about weapons. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. Oh, and when I was preparing for this video, I noticed that the last video brought me up to 100 subscribers, which I am very happy about that. And I would like to thank you all very much if you're subscribed. Um, please subscribe if you don't, I guess. <clears throat> and yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. As usual, like, comment, comment your favorite upgrade item or something. Uh, and yeah, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.